Hey everybody, what's going on? It's me, John Butter, and it's time to do another episode of our favorite show about failed NBC sitcoms, Peacock Graveyard. Yeah, I'm gonna do that every single time. So, uh, today, we're gonna be looking at the TV show, Bent. It's another, uh, rom-com type show. He was a boy, she was a girl... Can I make it any more obvious? Okay, that's enough. That's enough of the iPad, I promise. <laughs> Bent premiered on March 21st, 2012, and was cancelled on May 11th, 2012, after only six episodes. The show was created by Tad Quill, who I've just recently learned is a person and not a very low-dose cold medicine. You know, I remember vaguely seeing promos for this show when it first came out. Uh, I remember thinking it just wasn't my kind of show, so I never got into it. And also, I was graduating high school at the time, so I really did not have the time to get into a new show. But now I do, so let's talk about it. Alright, first off, who is in it? Well, don't be mad, but I regret to inform you that this show also stars David Walton. <laughs> I do not know why, but between 2010 and 2015, NBC doubled, tripled, quadrupled down on David Walton. I don't know what it is about him that made NBC give him so many chances. Is it the eyebrows? I don't know. But other than that, you've got Amanda Peet, J.B. Smoove, uh, Jeffrey Tambor, and a very young Joey King, who you may remember from the hit movie Wish Upon. Uh, I say hit movie because that's a movie where she gets hit by a car at the end. And there's also Margot Harshman or Tawny from Even Stevens and uh, oh yeah, Jesse Plemons. Literally months before he appeared on Breaking Bad for the first time, he was in an NBC sitcom. <laughs> Ain't that something. So what's it about? Well, Bent is about a recently divorced lawyer, Alex, who hires a contractor, Pete, to renovate her kitchen. Now, both people are kind of at a low point in their lives. Alex's ex-husband has just been sent to prison, leaving her to raise her daughter, Charlie, by herself. And Pete is a recovering gambling addict trying to get his old contracting group to trust him again. Alex and Pete's personalities clash almost immediately, as Alex is more of an uptight, type A personality, and Pete is more of like a slacker type. Despite all that, Pete spends the rest of the show desperately trying to hit on Alex, even though she already has a boyfriend. So, there were only six episodes, and even luckier for me, I found them all on Daily Motion. so this was a pretty easy watch. So, what do I think about this show? Well, it's interesting. I definitely liked it more than 100 questions, although that's not saying a lot. I'll start with what I liked. I liked that there was obviously thought put into the show, all the way down to the setting. I found an interview with the show creator Tad Quill explains that he picked Venice as the setting because he noticed that's where a lot of recently divorced people go to. It's like, Okay, yeah, I can respect that. This isn't just thrown together all willy-nilly. Tad Cool put some thought into the show. Effort was made. After 100 questions, that's all I can ask from a show creator. However, while 100 questions had very little going on plot-wise, Bent has maybe too much. There's way too many side characters to keep track of. You have Pete's three contracting buddies, his wannabe actor father, then you have Alex's young daughter, Charlie, her flirty sister, Scruzy, and her doctor boyfriend, Ben. That's seven side characters. But the worst part about this show, the part I like the absolute least, is the main plot between Alex and Pete. The whole show is centered around the idea that you want these two characters to end up together, like an opposites attract sort of thing, but the show gets very creepy very fast. Imagine hiring somebody to redo your kitchen, and within a couple of days, they sleep with your child's nanny, they hit on you even though you already have a boyfriend, they start insulting your boyfriend in front of you, they start listening in on your personal conversations, and then start making comments about your sex life. Stand sex life. What sex life? 
so creepy. And to make matters worse, this character is played by David Walton, who certainly is not adding any extra charisma. So the weird thing is Alex's boyfriend, Ben, is more than happy to reciprocate in this weird pissing contest with Pete. It's like, dude, you're a doctor, you're dating a lawyer, why do you feel intimidated by this weirdo contractor? It should be enough for Alex to just cut off ties from both Ben and Pete and start over fresh. But not only does she keep dating Ben, but she also starts having feelings for Pete by the last episode? It feels really inorganic. Part of me can't help but think, if Bent had gotten a full-length second season where they could flesh out their ideas, uh, the show could have improved. Especially if they moved the plot away from the main romance and focused more on the ensemble characters. But unfortunately, the show was cancelled almost a decade ago and we'll never truly know what could have happened. But what did happen? How did this show get cancelled so quickly? Well, it's really easy for me to say the show was bad and call it a day, but I looked up old tweets from when the show was still airing, and it seems like most people who knew about the show liked the show. So what happened to Bent? Well, for starters, they aired the show on Wednesdays. If you'll remember, this was when NBC was trying to make Wednesday the other comedy night, in addition to Thursday, and it did not stick mostly because they put really bad shows into that time slot, like Whitney, or Are You There Chelsea? Also, NBC aired Bent two episodes at a time, and with the show only being six episodes long, the show is over in under a month. That's not a lot of time for people to discover your show. Not only that, but it's also not a lot of time for people who like the show to get the word out. In the same interview, they asked Tad what he thought about NBC's decision to air Bent two episodes at a time, and he said he wasn't worried. Now, to quote Tad, he said it actually plays well to the strength of the show. Needless to say, in all three weeks that Bent aired, both episodes had the lowest ratings of the time slot for NBC. Even Rock Center with Brian Williams pulled in more viewers. So just like 100 Questions, this is another case of NBC blatantly trying to bury one of their own shows. So what did the show creator do after this? Well aside from creating a weird show where Jane Lynch plays a guardian angel, he also co-created and co-wrote The Moody's which was just very recently cancelled after two seasons. I took a look at the show, and it definitely looks better and more put together than Bent, although that might just be because of the other co-writers. And finally, do I think this show deserves a reboot, remake, or reunion? Uh, well, actually, I think it deserves none of it. I think it deserves a spin-off with just the contracting guys, because that was my absolute favorite part of the show in every episode. Please, someone get J.B. Smoove, Pasha D. Lichnikoff, and even Jesse Plemons on the phone. What are they even doing right now? Nothing. We got ourselves a gold mine here. <laughs> Alright, well that does it for me this week. If you have a failed NBC sitcom that you'd like me to talk about next, pop that down in the comments down below. You can also smash that MF like and subscribe, and you can check out my Patreon, where you can help support my channel. Alright, have a great day, John Butter fandom.